You're watching Cartel TV and I'm Jenny. Subscribe to the channel. Subcompact SUVs are here to stay and some of them, including the regular Kona, are pretty accomplished vehicles. The car I have here is definitely not regular. It's the Hyundai Kona N in the premium trim, which is the top. It's a legit performance version of the Kona. And with that N badge, you know it's going to be fun. I mean, the i30N virtually jumped from non-existence to a viable competitor to the hottest Golf versions. And that says a lot about the competence of Hyundai as a brand. But really, I doubt that the Kona N is going to be quite as good as the i30N because, you know, physics. But still, I think we're in for a treat today. And I'm also just curious to see if Kona has fixed its biggest misgiving, the lack of rear air vents. Now, the design takes most of the influence from the Kona. But just like the i30N, adds a few tweaks to make it recognisable. The first thing you'll notice are the red accents that can be found on the side skirts, the splitter, diffuser, and even brake calipers. The front looks more aggressive with this lower section, and these DRLs, I have to say, fit the feisty picture even better. The side also looks beefier, with pronounced body-painted cladding and aggressive creases. The 19-inch wheels are perfectly sized to add to the sporty looks, but don't go too far. At the back, we can check out the mentioned wing and diffuser, and these twin exhausts say that this is the real deal. Hyundai claims that the stylistic exercises are not just for show. Apparently, the front bumper lower skirt, side sill moulding, rear diffuser and rear double-layered spoiler improve aerodynamics by increasing downforce and reducing drag. Just in case you're not big on hints, the end badging is also prominent on the exterior and interior. Now, while the normal Kona has one of the biggest selections of available powertrains on the market, this Kona N has just one butt-kicking engine option. It's a 2.0-litre four-cylinder twin scroll turbo with 206 kilowatts of power and 392 newton metres of torque available from 2,100 to 4,700 revs. The engine is paired with the new 8-speed wet clutch DCT, which is a big step forward. It sprints to 100 in around 5.5 seconds, and that should be a buzz to drive. Hold up, bench the interior for a bit because I really want to know what this thing feels like to drive. It's also a notch behind the i30N, but really just a notch. It boils down to the body shape and physics. But on the engineering side, it's awesome. There is some body roll, but it's minimal. An electronic limited slip differential is present here as well. And it actually makes a difference when you throw the Kona into a bend. The engine and gearbox combo is also amazing. The wide torque curve is awesome and has pushed pretty much all the time. And the engine just loves to ram. The gearbox is as fast as you'd expect from a sporty dual clutch. And that new wet clutch version has been spotless so far. It really takes like half a lap on the track before you're really familiar with what you can expect from it. And its confident handling, grip and balance are big parts of the awesome driving experience. There are also driving modes that were used from the i30N and there's also this NGS button. The acronym is just badly thought out, so I'm not going to talk about it, but feel free to in the comments. But what it does, now that is a different story. It gives you 20 seconds of overboost that adds up to noticeable power increase. Yeah. It's like those racing video games where you get a little bit of extra kick for a short while or a watered down version of the Fast and Furious boost button. So what's it like in more timid everyday conditions? Basically, it's a Kona with a lot more grunt and growl. It's a bit harsh on bad roads, but it's great in the city and smooth while cruising. You have eco and normal modes for these purposes, and they make the car feel like a regular Kona. Now you get it into one of its various sports modes, and it just becomes a completely different car to drive. And this is where I feel it's gonna have its main appeal. The interior is less flashy than the exterior, and it still has some cheaper plastics around the cabin. Nothing terrible, but it doesn't feel as modern as a lot of new Hyundai interiors. Probably the next gen model will be better. And even though the interior design feels slightly bland, the tech is still pretty good. You'll notice the familiar N-related features like this N steering wheel with all the track-ready features. The seats are really supportive and they look really nice with this leather and Alcantara combo. And for a change, I actually don't mind this light blue stitching. The instrument cluster is compact and fully digital, and the changing screens with the drive modes looks amazing. This particular screen is familiar from other Hyundai models and is just awesome. And yes, you're still limited to wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto with this screen. 
In terms of living every day in this car, the front is really spacious and accommodating. While I do love the unique central console of the Kona Electric, I have to say this more conventional one is also pretty good in practical terms. You get heaps of cool equipment as standard, and that includes heated front and rear seats. And you actually don't get heated rear seats as a standard on a lot of more luxurious models. And this being the premium trim, you also get cooled seats up front. Storage spaces are the same as in the standard Kona, which means they are great and they include the tray in front of the armrest. An armrest bin, door pockets, glove box, and a wireless charging tray. And there's also this little extra storage space here, which I can't remember being on the regular Kona. Good for coins, I guess. Now the back is actually quite comfortable for two adults. The seats, I have to say, are very comfortable, but as with all Konas, you don't get a lot of leg room. And no air vents, sadly. In the back, 361 litres of boot space. Flat fold the seats and you get up to 1,143 litres. But then it's a two-seater. In terms of safety, the Kona end is pretty good, even if it's completely standard. It gets Hyundai Smart Sense, including blind spot collision avoidance assist, driver attention warning, forward collision avoidance assist, camera and radar type, including car pedestrian cyclist detection, city urban interurban operational speeds, high beam assist, lane following assist, lane keeping assist, rear cross traffic collision avoidance assist, rear occupant alert, safe exit warning, smart cruise control, parking distance warning reverse, rear view monitor with parking guidance, ABS, brake assist, EBD, downhill brake control, hill start assist, traction control, vehicle stability management. The Kona N starts at 47500 for the manufacturer's listed price, and this top premium trim is 50500 MLP. Just like the Kona Electric doesn't really have many competitors, the Kona N is also quite unique in its part of the market. There are other cars in this pretty specific performance segment out there, such as the T-Roc R or the SQ2, but they're more expensive as well as a bit more powerful. Not that the Kona is lacking in the power department. And honestly, how much power do you need for everyday driving? Now the Kona N isn't cheap, but when you look at the rest of the offer, it's pretty clear that it's priced quite well. And if you're after an asphalt tearing, feature-packed subcompact SUV, then it is actually well worth the money. It's also impossible not to compare it to the i30N, and they both have their advantages. The Kona N has a more comfortable feel in regular driving conditions. The i30N has a bit more in terms of the performance driving feel thanks to its lower stance. Now, if you're looking for a track car, then you'd buy the i30N, obviously. If you want an everyday car with the versatility to transform into a usable little beast, then go for the Kona N. So some of you might be thinking, why not just buy a hot hatch? Well, it's kind of like saying, well, why not buy just a hatch instead of a subcompact SUV? Because that's what people want. So this is kind of giving those benefits of the subcompact SUV, along with all the driving performance and enjoyment of the hot hatch. So creating kind of a juicy little hybrid. So the purely driving enthusiast in me will prefer the i30N. But the objective me has to give a slight edge to the Kona N due to its versatility. And let me reiterate, this Kona N is a little beast. Most people looking at these kinds of cars are going to welcome that everyday side to them. And the Kona N is just a great choice in that respect. And I particularly like this red color. What do you think? Personally, I might not buy it. I'm kind of a white and silver girl, but I think it looks good. Thanks again for watching Cartel TV. So, what did you think? Are you gonna go out and test drive one of these? I highly recommend it. And also the color. It was a bit of a bag of mixed opinions in the Cartel team. I like it. What do you think? Let us know in the comments and we'll see you in the next review. Peace.